ويلكم باك ايام بروفيسور احمد محمد عطيه ايام زهيد اوف مايكرو انجينيرنج ديبارتمنت ات الكترونكس ريسيرش انستيتيوت اف يو ار انتريست تو كونتاكت ويز مي ذيس از ماي ايميل ان ذيس فيديوز وي ار ستاديينج ذا تكست بوك اوف مايكرو انجينيرنج باي E.M. Abuzar Starting from this video We are going to start from chapter 6 Microwave Resonators Microwave Resonators are used in a variety of applications like filters, oscillators, frequency meters and tuned amplifiers In general uh, near the resonance, microwave resonators can be represented either as a series resonance circuit composed of RLC elements connected in series, or it can be represented as parallel RLC circuit. So we have two types of Resonant circuits, barrel R L C circuits, and series R L C circuits. Through our study of this chapter, we are going to discuss different types of resonators. Almost all of them will be finally represented in one of these two forms. Now in the first video of microwave resonators, we are going to study at the beginning the main characteristics of series resonance circuit. So we are going to start with series resonance circuit. As we said, series resonance circuit is composed of a series elements R, L, C in series. The input impedance of a series resonance circuit is given by R plus J omega L minus G over omega C. The power in series resonance circuit is given in is given by bar input equals half V multiplied by I conjugate and the current is actually V over Z. So we are going to take V over Z R plus G omega L minus G over omega C and take its conjugate. This input bar can also be presented as how the complex input impedance multiplied by the magnitude of the current square can also be presented as how the complex input impedance multiplied by the magnitude of V over Z input to power 2. Actually, V over Z input is the value of R. According to Sandgren representation, we can say that the input power is half the magnitude of I squared multiplied by Z input, where Z input is R plus G omega L minus G over omega C. Actually, the first term, half I squared R, represents the power losses in this circuit. While 1 over 4 multiplied by I squared L represents the stored magnetic energy in the inductance. On the other hand, 1 over 4 VC squared the voltage on the capacitor because effectively if we are talking about a series circuit the voltage on the resistor plus the voltage on the inductor plus the voltage on the capacitor will equal the total voltage which is Kirchhoff of flow so the stored electric energy equals 1 over 4 the voltage on the capacitor square, the magnitude of the voltage on the capacitor square multiplied by the capacitor. Effectively, the voltage on the capacitor it can be obtained as 
the magnitude of the current passing through the circuit because the current is the same in all elements over omega c so in this case we can say that this equal 1 over 4 the magnitude of the current squared 1 over omega squared c squared multiplied by c so we have c here and we have c squared in the denominator by eliminating c in the in the denominator with c squared in the denominator we can say that it is 1 over 4 the magnitude of the current squared multiplied by 1 over omega squared c here only one c okay this is a stored magnetic energy according to the definition of the power losses stored magnetic energy and stored electric energy we can say that the total input power equals the power losses plus 2g omega plus 2g omega multiplied by the stored magnetic energy minus the stored electric energy and here this 2g omega is actually the time average stored magnetic energy and the time average of stored electric energy in time harmonic fields or in time harmonic signals thus the total input power correspond to the total power loss plus the stored or the average time average stored magnetic energy minus the time average stored electric energy according to this definition of the input power and according to the definition of the input power as half z input multiplied by i square we can redefine the input impedance in terms of the power losses and the stored energy as the input impedance z input would equal 2 p input over i square or the magnitude of the current square and in this case this would be power losses plus 2g omega multiplied by wm minus we over half i square so this is the definition of the input impedance in terms of the corresponding elements this is the definition of the input impedance in terms of the power losses and stored magnetic and electric energies okay at resonance the stored magnetic energy equals the stored electric energy in this case we have stored energy in the form of magnetic energy which is passed in another cycle to stored electric energy so they are oscillating between magnetic and electric energy when the stored magnetic energy equals the stored electric energy this condition we are calling uh, the resonance condition so at resonance the stored magnetic energy equals the stored electric energy which actually in terms of the input impedance when the reactance of the inductance has a magnitude equal the reactance of the capacitance and because both of them are in opposite signs so in this case the total reactance would be zero all right so we say that resonance occurs when the average stored magnetic energy and electric energy are equal or in other words wm equals w -E. If Wm equals WE, in this case, according to the definition of the input impedance in terms of the power losses and the stored magnetic and electric energy, it would be here Wm equals WE, so the input impedance would be V losses over half I square. 
which is actually the value of R. So as a resonance, the input impedance Z input equals V losses over half I square, which actually equals the value of the resistance. And as I mentioned, the resonance occurs when the stored magnetic energy equals the stored electric energy, or in other words, when the reactance of the inductive part equals the reactance of the capacitive part. So in this case, this occurs when J omega L equals J over omega C. Or in other words, omega, the frequency at which the resonance occurs, equals omega naught, which equals 1 over square root L multiplied by C. So the resonance frequency of this circuit equals 1 over square root LC. If we are going to draw the total impedance, the total input impedance as a function of omega, we can note that at omega equals omega naught, the input impedance has a magnitude r. At a lower frequency, the input impedance is increased because of the increase in the reactance of the capacitance. On the other hand, at higher frequency, the input impedance is increased due to the increase in the, re in, uh, the inductive reactance. At resonance, the inductive reactance equals the capacitive reactance and both of them are opposite inside so the total impedance is R. So the magnitude of input impedance as a function of omega for series resonance circuit it would look like this shape. Right? And actually we are going to define the operating bandwidth of this resonance circuit as the frequency band where the input impedance is less than the magnitude of the input impedance is less than or equal r over square root or over uh ah, oh, sorry r over point one or oh, point seven oh seven one point seven oh seven is one over square root two okay so in the frequency range where the input impedance is less than R over 0.707 this will correspond to the operating bandwidth of this series resonance circuit and the center in this case where the input impedance equals R okay all right we are going to define an important parameter for resonant circuits, which is a quality factor. In general, the definition of the quality factor equals omega multiplied by the average energy stored in the circuit over the energy losses per second. This definition is actually is the same for either series or parallel resonant circuit, and it can be represented in notations as omega multiplied by Wm plus Wb over power losses. So the quality factor equals omega multiplied by the total stored energy, the total stored magnetic energy plus the total stored electric energy. It should be noted here we have a positive sign, so we are going to add the total energy together over P losses. At resonance, the value of the stored magnetic energy equals the value of the stored electric energy. So we can simply replace at resonance WE by WM. So the quality factor at the resonance equals omega naught, where the omega would be omega naught at the resonance, multiplied by 2 WM twice the stored uh, magnetic energy over the power loss. And already we have said that the stored magnetic energy uh, is 
omega naught L and power losses is 1 over 2i squared r stored magnetic energy omega naught L multiplied by i squared so in this case the quality factor stored magnetic energy here omega naught multiplied by L multiplied by I squared to correspond to twice the stored magnetic energy uh, the stored magnetic energy and 1 over 2 I squared R is the power losses so we can say that the quality factor at the resonance equals omega naught L over R we can also say that at resonance omega naught L equals 1 over omega naught C so we can replace omega naught L by 1 over omega naught C this means that the quality factor at the resonance can be represented as 1 over omega naught R C in this case it can be noted that as R decreases when we are going to decrease the value of the series resistance, the quality factor is increased. And this condition for series resistance set. Here is a definition of the quality factor. This is the definition of the quality factor is the same for series and barrack. But this obtained quality factor at resonance as omega naught L over R or 1 over omega naught RC. This for series resonance set. And according to this, if R decreases, the quality factor increases. Input impedance of the series resonance circuit near the resonance. In general, we have obtained the input impedance, Z input, as R plus G omega L minus G over omega C. This is the general form for the input impedance for series resonance set. However, we may need to approximate this input impedance when we are working quite close to the resonant frequency. Because actually at the resonant frequency specifically at omega equals omega naught, z input equals r. But quite close to uh, the resonant frequency, what will be the input impedance? We know that omega naught is 1 over square root LC and also we know that the quality factor at the resonance Q naught equals omega naught L over R so from the definition of the input impedance we can take J omega L as a common factor so the input impedance could be R plus J omega L multiplied by 1 minus we have taken J, so J is OK. We have taken Omega L, so we are going to divide by Omega L. So it would be 1 over Omega squared LC. And already we know that 1 over square root LC is Omega naught. So 1 over LC is Omega naught squared. This means that we can say that 1 minus Omega naught squared over Omega. By making the denominator is a common, we can say that it is R plus G omega L multiplied by omega squared minus omega naught squared over omega squared. Alright? Okay. Now, this omega squared minus omega naught squared can be simplified as omega minus omega naught multiplied by omega plus omega naught. And because we are talking about near resonance, this means that omega minus omega naught is very small value, which is nearly delta. Omega equals omega naught plus delta omega, for example. So omega minus omega naught is delta omega. On the other hand, omega plus omega naught is omega naught plus delta plus omega naught, which is, uh, oh, sorry, here we can say that uh, omega plus omega naught we can say that omega naught is omega minus delta omega. So we can say that is 2 omega minus delta omega. 
and because the value of delta omega is very small value we are going to ignore delta omega with respect to omega this means that omega squared minus omega naught squared can be approximated as 2 omega multiplied by delta omega nearly 2 omega by delta omega. okay so we are going to replace omega squared minus omega naught squared by 2 omega multiplied by delta omega and we have omega here in the denominator and omega square in the denominator so in this case it would be delta omega uh, 2 delta omega over omega and we have omega here so this will be eliminated with this omega so the remaining part would be r plus 2j l multiplied by delta omega this means that all this part would be replaced by 2 delta omega omega multiplied by omega squared minus omega naught squared over omega squared will be replaced by 2 delta omega where delta omega is the difference of the operating frequency from the resonant frequency okay all right now in terms of the quality factor we can replace the value of L by R multiplied by Q naught over omega naught so in this case the input impedance in terms of the resistance and the quality factor would be J multiplied R plus J multiplied by 2 R Q naught delta omega over omega right r q naught over omega naught this corresponds to the value of the inductance all right now we have the input impedance near the resonance can be either r plus 2 j l delta omega or r plus j multiplied by 2 r q naught delta omega over omega We are going to represent omega naught in complex frequency domain as omega naught multiplied by 1 plus j over 2 q naught. So we are going to replace omega naught from completely real value to complex frequency as omega naught multiplied by 1 plus j over 2 q naught. In this case, here, delta omega was actually omega minus omega naught. Omega minus omega naught. So, in the complex frequency domain, in the complex frequency domain, we can represent the input impedance in terms of uh, the inductive value only as J2L multiplied by delta omega, which is omega minus omega naught. This means that if I'm going to use complex frequency instead of real frequency, in this case the input impedance would be completely presented in terms of the inductive part. There is no need to the real part because the real part has been included directly in the complex frequency. Let us see that. Here we are going to replace omega naught by omega naught multiplied by 1 plus g over 2 q naught. So this value would be replaced by the corresponding complex value omega naught minus j omega naught over 2q naught okay now if we are going to simplify this this would be 2jl multiplied by omega minus omega naught here this is a real omega naught right and j multiplied by minus j it would be plus 2l over 2 q naught multiplied by omega naught so we have omega naught l over q naught which is a real part which is due to the multiplication of j to l by minus j omega naught over 2 q naught here plus j to l omega minus omega now this value is actually j to l delta omega which is the original one now the remaining part is omega naught l over q naught 
which is actually the value of r here r is omega naught l over q naught so this means that if we are going to use the complex frequency domain we are going to change omega naught by omega naught multiplied by 1 plus g over q q naught this term in this case the input impedance would be presented only in terms of the inductive part which is j2l delta omega which is omega minus the complex omega all right okay now how to calculate this bandwidth we have mentioned this bandwidth before but we didn't mention how to calculate it we say that the input impedance near the resonance equal r plus j to l delta omega or in terms of the quality factor we can say that r plus j to r q naught delta omega over omega actually this bandwidth is determined as the value of the total impedance z input would be less than or equal square root 2 multiplied by the value of r or in other words the real bar equals r and the imaginary bar equal r okay so if the real part is r and the imaginary part is r the magnitude of the input impedance in this case should be 2 r squared because it would be the magnitude of the input impedance would be the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared so if this is r and this is r so r squared plus r squared would be 2 r squared right okay now this condition is satisfied from f minimum to f naught to f maximum actually the value of f maximum minus f minimum is the bandwidth on the other hand f naught minus f minimum correspond to half of the bandwidth and f maximum minus f naught corresponds to half of the bandwidth okay so this means that the value of delta omega over omega naught to change from 2r square to r square from twice r square to only one r square is a half power bandwidth if we are going to multiply it by 2 so 2 multiplied by delta omega over omega naught would be the complete bandwidth so according to this we are going to move from this point f minimum to f naught and from f naught to f maximum so 2 multiplied by delta omega over omega naught is a complete bandwidth or in other words delta omega this is a change this is a change delta omega over omega naught corresponds to the bandwidth over 2 so we can represent this as r plus g multiplied by r q naught multiplied by 2 delta omega over omega naught which is the bandwidth this is a measuring part and this is a real part if the magnitude of this complex impedance equals 2r square this means that the real part is R and the imaginary part is R. Pick with the imaginary part is R Q naught bandwidth. So to obtain imaginary part equals R, this means that Q naught multiplied by the bandwidth must equal 1. Or in other words, 
the operating bandwidth of the series resonant circuit is 1 over Q0. So the bandwidth of the series resonant circuit is 1 over Q0. Actually, the bandwidth of series or parallel resonant circuit is 1 over Q0. This is the half power fractional bandwidth of the resonant. I have bar because actually the bar in this case, uh, the input bar is half of the maximum power in the case of the resonance. So this is the half power fractional bandwidth of the resonance. Okay. All right.